Hello and welcome to Let's Code and Indie Game episode 25. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode, we're going to pause to do a bit of refactoring before we carry on with sprite sheets and animations. Uh, so let's dive straight in. So I guess we should uh, start by just reviewing what we did last time. And that was to add some separate classes for animation so that our player now shows a different animation when they're stopped and when they're moving. What we're going to do in this episode is split out some of the code from our entity class into a new class. And that is because our entity class is just getting really big. If we take a look at it, it is, let's see, let's see, it's about 100 lines of code but it's responsible for um, a couple of different things. It's doing a lot of the orchestration for us, so if we take a look at its update method, it does a lot of um, just calling update on the individual parts of our entity, and it also updates the position of our entity as well, and those feel like two different things. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class and move all of the position code into that class. And the aim really is just to keep things nice and simple. So we're going to take some time now to simplify our code. So in the future, it's uh, it stays easy to build on top of. Right, let's uh, just tidy up some of these folders. There we go. Okay, so let's cut our new class. And we'll just put it in uh, logic right next to entity. So new file, and we'll call it position.lua. And we'll just uh, start in the way we normally do. So I won't uh, talk through the, um, the boilerplate code here because we've done this uh, quite a lot now in these episodes. Create. So there we have a very, um, oh, there we have the skeleton, I suppose, of our position module and uh, a create method for our position class. So let's take a look at our entity class and um, work out which bits should be moved into our new class. So a good starting point is x, y, and z, and draw x and draw y, because all of these involve uh, positions, and we want to move all the position logic into a new class. So it would make sense if our position class, or if the constructor for our position class, took an x, y, and z position to start with. Then we can just say instance.x is x, instance.y is y, and instance.z is z. And we know that we also need a draw x, and that needs to be something, and a draw y. And I'm just going to put these equal to nil for now, um, and then look at our entity class to understand how these get set. So we have a bit of duplicated logic here, because just when we create our entity class, we set draw x to x and draw y to y minus z over 2. But when we update, where are we? Where's our update method? When we update our um, entity class, we get the screen position from our vector module um, and we use those values to update draw x and draw y. And uh, it just feels a bit messy because we have two different ways of doing hopefully the same thing. So in our new position class, let's make sure we only we only have one way of doing these things. And just to make it super obvious what we're doing, let's pull out a, uh, a private method to do that. So let's just call this update uh, draw position. This will now be a function which takes self. And the reason I'm starting this with an underscore is just to remind myself that I'm not going to expose this method anywhere. So the idea is um, that this is just a method we can use inside of the uh, position module, uh, but nothing else should use it. And now we know we'll need 
our vector class. So let's pull that in, or sorry, our vector module. Require source math vector. And let's take a look at what's going on inside of our entity. Uh, so we get the screen position by using world to screen in our vector class, and we also call to position on self. And I think that is because if we take a look at to position, that's because our vector module expects a table with x, y, and z values as arguments. Uh, so that's just making a new table and setting x equal to uh, x, y equal to y, and z equal to z all on self. So there's a couple of different ways you can use tables in Lua. You can use them as um, lists or arrays like we're doing down here, but you can also use them as maps where you have a key and a value. Um, and that's how we're using it uh, using it here. So let's uh, replicate that here. So we can say local, uh, and we're calling this a screen position, though here we're calling it a draw position. So let's uh, stick with draw position. This is vector world to screen. And we need an x value which will be self.x, a y value which will be self.y, and a z value which will be self.z. Then we can just say self.draw x is equal to draw position dot x I think but let's uh, double check yep dot x and self draw y is oops draw y is equal to draw position dot y then we just need to make sure that we call update draw position when we create our class so that draw x and draw y get set to some sensible values. Uh, update draw position on inst. Okay, so where else do we use our um, current positions inside of our entity class? We update our bounding box with them so we can come back and update that a bit later. We have a two position method which we hopefully won't need anymore once we've created a position class. We use draw x and draw y when we actually draw our sprite and when we draw some of the debugging so that's something we can update. We have this position string which we should also be able to um, get rid of or at least replace. So yeah that's a good candidate for something we should be able to, uh, to do on our position method or on our position class. So let's just create a toString method. Self. And we just want this to do the same thing as our position string method here, which just takes a... it floors a bunch of values and it glues them together as a string. So return math.floors self.x and a comma and math.floor self.y join to a comma and let's uh, put these on new lines just so it's a bit neater. There we go. And math.floor self.z. And because toString is going to be a public method, we should attach it to our instance. toString equals toString. Okay, so now we should be ready to actually start using our position class instead of our 
um, or instead of a positions inside of our entity. And what this will do to start with is it will break a whole bunch of things. So a lot of this episode will just be getting back to the place we were. But the purpose of this again is just to make our code simpler. So sometimes you have to do this and it's better to do this early than, um, than late. So now we can start off by just saying inst.position is equal to position.create uh, and we'll pass in x, y, and z. Now eventually we probably want to just pass a position into our entity class, but we're going to do this in two steps. So um, our end goal here is to replace x, y, and z here with just one, uh, one position argument, which will be an instance of our position class. But to get there, um, it's probably easier to do it in two steps. So let's require our position class. Position equals require uh, source logic position. And the other thing we're going to need to do is to update our position um, every time our entity updates. So let's give it an update method. So we know it needs self because it's an instance method. And it probably doesn't need the game state right now, but most of our update methods take the game state as the second argument. So uh, let's just put it there uh, by convention. And let's just double check what we do uh, when we update our entities. So we can remove these because this uh, should now yeah, this should now take place as part of our position class. Then inside of here, we just really need to call update draw position on self. Okay, and the other thing we need to do is to actually use our position now um, rather than just the straight values from our entity. So, oh, we can get rid of draw x and draw y as well. And so now when we create our bounding box, we want to use instance.position.x and instance.position.z. No changes needed there, no changes needed here, but when we update our bounding box, we want to use self.position.x and self.position.z. To position, we can now get rid of. Let's see, when we draw, we're going to need to use self.position.drawx and self.position.drawy. And we'll just uh, neaten that up a bit as well. There we go, and when we uh, print our debug string, we're also going to need to change this to use the position. And also, rather than position string, we now want to call self.position to string. and we no longer need position string. So our entity class is getting smaller uh, because we are moving most of this logic somewhere else. And that's really the aim of this exercise. Still pretty big, so um, we might split it up further in future, but this is at least a start. 
Okay, um, now I'm going to run the game and see what breaks because we've made a lot of changes to the the sort of interface of our entity class or how the rest of the game sees our entity class. So we need to go through and fix those changes and the fastest way of fixing them is probably to find out what breaks and then go in and fix it. So if I run our game, let me see. Um, follow player line 6, attempt to call method to position a nil value. So... Movement, follow player, line 6, yep, there's no longer a two-position method. But hopefully we can just use dot position. And similarly, there's no longer a two-position or, yeah, two-position method on our entity, but we should just be able to use our position arguments here. Now follow player, attempt to perform arithmetic on field x, a nil value, and this is coming from line 19. So if we take a look at line 19, yep, that's because this should be position.x and position.z. And also when we update Yeah, when we update our entities' positions, we can no longer just assign them uh, because we want to make sure the draw position gets updated as well. So, where's our position class gone? So what we can actually do here is change our update method to take x, y, and z. Then we can do self.x equals x, self.y equals y, and self.z equals z. Hmm, does this? Yeah, we probably want to do it this way. There's a couple of ways we could do this, but this is the most obvious way for now, so let's stick with this one. Um, x, y, and z, and update draw position. Then inside of Uh, follow player, we can come in and do entity.position update. And then this will take new x uh, entity.position.y because we want the existing y and new z. So what this does mean is every time we update our position, we'll be doing the calculations to work out the draw x and draw y, which might be slightly wasteful oops, uh, eventually, but for now it feels, uh, feels okay. Um, we'll probably come back in and we can optimize some of these things a little later, but our goal of the moment is just to get our game to a state where it's playable. And once it is playable, we can work out where we really need to spend time optimizing uh, optimizing our code and where we can let it slide so that should be that should be fine uh, let's see what's broken now follow player line 23 method update a nil value okay that's easy enough to fix Inst update equals update okay now we're in bounce line 6 attempt call to position so Similar to the other one, we can now use entity dot position and player dot position. Good, and then if we just go through this, we'll need entity dot position dot y and entity dot position.y. In fact, because we do this so often, it's probably worth just pulling out the position as a local variable. So pos equals entity.position, then we can just do pos.y. pos.y 
and here where we update the entity.y let's just pull out local new y equals pos.y minus um, our new or minus our change in y values then we can just do entity.position update uh, pos.x new y pos.z okay room line 38 attempt to compare number with nil so let's jump to room 38 and this is coming from our map class where we call next room and previous room so let's take a look at map by next room here we go and here we do game.player.x and game.player.z equals so we set some values here but would that give us a comparison error Oh well, we know we need to fix it anyway, so replace this with game.player.position update. And we keep the y value, but we want new room dot entrance x and game dot player dot position dot y so let's neaten this up we keep the y position but we set the z position to new room dot entrance z there we go so we can take out these two lines And we'll need to do the same thing in previous room, but use the exit values instead. So maybe we'll just take this. And instead of entrance, we want exit and exit. Okay, still room line 38. So coming from map line 24. So current room self, that's coming from update game self. This is coming from game state. Source logic rooms room line 38. Ah, of course. Um, so this is the draw x. So we just need position is greater than room width. Then, then we call next room. Ah, okay. As yes, that makes sense. And then player dot position. So draw x um, has now been moved onto the position as well as x, y, and z. So that makes perfect sense. So now when we do this, keyboard movement line thirty seven. which will be here, line 37. Dot position dot x and dot position dot z. And again, we need to fix the update method here. So entity dot position update new x entity dot position dot x y and new z there we go and this game debug string I'm just going to remove for now and we'll put it back if we need it uh, draw x in view dot lua Uh, 
Uh, which line was that? That was on line 19. Oops. There we go. Dot position draw X and dot position draw Y. Okay, so we are back to the state where our game runs, uh, but there's probably a few more things that we need to fix. So if I change rooms, then attempt to index global new room, a nil value map line 51. So let's find out what's going on. Map line 51, new room, there we go. So we'll just play through a couple of rooms to check that um, everything is still working. So we can go into a new room, if we go backwards, um, ah, new ROM, that's because uh, I decided to copy paste, which uh, always creates more problems than it fixes. Forward, backwards. Okay, that's working. Uh, but when we try and punch, then um, we get a crash, and that's because we need to actually fix. So I think that's in player. Um, if we look at action 1, we still use x, y, and z, so we just need to change this to position. Um, Position.x, self.position.y, and self.position.z. There we go. And let's just do a quick sanity check. Is there anywhere where we do entity.x? Nope. Entity.y? Nope. Uh, so I'm just searching through the whole project here, looking for any places where I may have uh, forgotten to update things. Good. So everywhere we see draw x, it should be on the end of a position, except if it's inside of position. Yep. And the same for most of our other values. Cool. So I'll just neaten up the files, and we'll take a quick look at where we've got to. So we now have a position class, um, which basically deals with anything to do with a position. So updating, uh, keeping the drawing positions and the world positions in sync. Um, yeah, really that's its responsibility, I suppose, is um, making sure our positions make sense in terms of our game. So the final thing we'll do for this episode is let's go in and rather than passing in x, y, and z when we create an entity, we'll actually pass in a position. Then we just do instance.position equals position, which means our entity class no longer needs to know about the position class directly, and it also no longer needs to know about the vector class directly. So again, the goal of this episode wasn't to add any new functionality, it was to um, make our code a bit simpler, but keep all of our existing functionality working. And we generally call that refactoring. So, oops, need to uh, fix the trackpad. There we go. Um, so yeah, a refactor is when you change your code, but you don't change any of your functionality. And you normally do that because you want your code to look nicer or be easier to maintain. So now if I run the game, well, it's obviously going to break. So let's jump into player and start fixing it where we know we need to fix it. So when we create our player, we'll need to now know about positions. Local position equals require source dot logic dot position. Then instead of 50, 0, 100, we want to pass in 
position dot create fifty zero one hundred. And inside our player class, we also create our punch entity. And this currently takes an x, y, and z. So instead, let's actually change punch.create to take a position, which can just be. Ah, yeah, I guess we'll do position.create. Um, and then we just want to take the player's position. So we'll do local pos equals self dot position and we'll create a new position position dot x position dot y position dot z oops sorry pos pos dot x pos dot y and pos dot z then inside of our except it's pos.x plus 8 at the moment. Um, then inside of our punch class, can just dive in where we create instead of x pos, y pos, and z pos, we now just pass in a position here, which I'll just call pos. We can replace all of these with pos. In fact, if I just look for everywhere where we do an entity.create, so punch we've now fixed. Um, inside of entity.lua, that's fine, that's the constructor. Inside of player, I think we've got that sorted. But inside of slime.lua, we also want to change this to just be a position. Pos, and then x pos, y pos, z pos. Uh, we'll just pass in a position and then this is we actually create our slimes inside of map I think inside of new room or create room this looks like the guy so we'll pull in our position class source logic dot position Then inside of create room, when we create our slime, we also want to just do position dot create expos. Uh, where did we create our slime? Zero. Yes. Position dot create expos zero and z pos. And we also create our magic potions here in the same way. So let's just pull out a position, position.create. This will be 150 plus i times 10, 0, and 100. And then we just pass in pause to our potion. So we should uh, make sure we update that. If I can remember where it is, ah, pickups. Pickups, magic potion, create now just takes a position. Pause, and we replace this with pause. Okay, let's see where we're up to. Player line 35. It's probably just missing a comma. Yep. So far, so good. Good, everything still seems to be working. So we'll stop this episode here. 
Um, we haven't added anything new, but I think it is valuable to also go through the process of refactoring and fixing stuff as we go to really show people how that works as well, because a lot of programming is actually going back and rewriting, fixing stuff you've already written just to make sure it's really maintainable and that you can come back to it later and still understand what's going on. So in the next episode we will go on and we will finish our sprite sheet animations, we still need to sort out our bounding boxes and we need to um, flip the player or flip the sprite so the player can walk forwards and backwards. We'll tackle both of those things in the next episode but for now we will stop. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.